Brown bears are the largest meat-eating animals in the world. The biggest of them live here in Alaska and in neighboring Canada. They share this rugged, open country with many other land animals. Brown bears eat almost any kind of food. The green shoots and the roots of plants and berries and insects. And they'll also eat small animals. This film is about a favorite food of the brown bears and how they get it. Late springtime in Alaska is the time when the bears look for that special food in the rivers. It's salmon. Every spring, many thousands of these fish swim up Alaskan rivers to lay their eggs. And every spring, the brown bears start walking to the rivers to fish. Even though some of the bears are a light brown color and some are darker, they're all the same kind, Alaskan brown bears. A full-grown one may weigh as much as a small car. These big animals have to eat a lot of food. So it's down to the river for a meal. A bear can hold a live fish in its front paws with the help of long, sharp claws. Bears can use their claws and sharp teeth to kill animals as large as a deer. Bears use their paws to hold things almost as well as we use our hands. Catching salmon like this looks easy, but it takes a lot of practice in the water. And that starts when the bears are young cubs. A female bear usually has two cubs, although sometimes she may have three or even four. They're very small when they're born, about the size of a mouse. Now they're big enough to follow their mother into the river for their first swimming lesson. She's picked a place where the water isn't flowing too fast. The cubs learn by watching her and doing what she does. And she stays close while they're learning to swim. Here's a family of four, three older cubs and their mother. Bear cubs stay with the mother until they're about a year and a half old and just about full grown. Now they're all going to try for a meal in the river. Mother Bear leads the way. She'll show her cubs how it's done. Will her cubs be able to do as well? These two would rather wrestle than fish. 
This one is brave enough to get in, but it doesn't seem to know what to do next. The cubs can learn not only by watching their mother, but by watching the other bears too, because they don't all fish in the same way. This one does a little quiet searching underwater. This one likes more action. And this one missed it. But he's going to try again. He may be more of a diver than a fisherman. That may not be the best way to catch salmon. missed again. The other bears don't seem to have that much trouble. One more try. And he misses again. Well, the cubs aren't learning about fishing by watching him. But look, the diving bear has done it this time. If you can't catch your own fish, you might try to get one from another bear. That's what the three cubs are squabbling about with their mother. But it looks like the mother bear doesn't want to share the fish with her cubs. One by one, the bears leave the river after they've had enough to eat. And whenever they leave, the seagulls scramble for the leftovers. The bald eagle is another bird that likes salmon. It catches its own and also eats what's left of the fish the bears have caught. The Alaskan brown bears have been living this way for thousands of years. But as more people move into Alaska, the bears will have to be protected. To do that, scientists from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, who are biologists, are studying the bears. They want to learn more about how the bears live. They do this by tagging the bears. The only way they can get to a bear to tag it is to use a drug in a dart gun. The drug will tranquilize the bear. Putting it to sleep for a little while won't hurt it. Bears don't see very well, but their sense of smell is good. So this biologist hides where the wind doesn't carry his scent to the bear. This will put the bear to sleep for several minutes. Stung by the dart, the bear runs, but won't get very far. The biologists write down the time and the day they tag the bear. They also write the number of the tag they attach to the bear's ear. The bear is measured. This one is almost three meters long, nine feet from nose to tail. They measure the size of its head. And then put a colored collar on that also has a number. they will be able to see the collar wherever the bear goes. And later, there it is, back to the river to fish, almost as though nothing had happened.
To make it easier to tell one bear from another, collars of different colors are used. Collars make it easier for the biologist to study a particular bear. They can also compare them, see which bears have better fishing skills. Marking the bears helps biologists answer questions, like how fast do they grow? How many are there? Where do they travel? What foods do they eat? How skilled are they at fishing? Red collar number 91, for instance, isn't doing too well. Biologists have learned that a full-grown bear will eat seven or eight salmon a day. They've also learned which ones have a quick temper when they can't get what they want. Studying the bears that have collars is a big help in learning more about how they live and how they can be protected. The bears will be fishing until the middle of summer. Then the berries will be ripe and they'll leave the river to find berries and other food. Later, when winter comes, they'll sleep through the cold weather in cozy dens. Then, in spring, the brown bears of Alaska will come back to fish once again.